Good afternoon. Today is a cold and snowy day, which I'm very grateful for because I've been having some sinus allergies. My nose has been feeling so very mm, just tickly all the time. So this snow is going to tamp down all that pollen and I'm not going to have a bunch of sinus problems because the snow is tamping all of it down. So I'm very grateful for that. And today I just want to share a little bit about spiritual warfare. Today I'm teaching a class on spiritual warfare and how to put on the full armor of God. So I'm teaching um, a Christian recovery group and I have about 20 people that um, are interested, have showed interest. And I thought I would put something out there for the general public for free about um, what it means to put on the full armor of God. Um, putting on the full armor of God is really important because otherwise you go outside essentially spiritually naked and if you don't have your armor for protection then other people's energy um, especially when they're really angry or really anxious or just feeling negative emotions many people are not aware that when they speak our words are projecting energy in a verbal frequency so sound waves they can go like this those are low sound waves low vibration sound waves and they can spike they can be really high vibration and a lot of people these days are talking about wanting to be high vibration but they're not aware that all high vibration, in other words, the vibration of the sound wave that spikes really heavily like this, um, isn't always necessarily a positive vibration. So I want you to think about when you see someone's heartbeat on one of those projectors where they're showing, you know, beep, 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 right? That would be a, no, I guess, no vibration, right? If your heart has stopped, but then it beeps. And if you look at the sound waves, a healthy heartbeat is doing this. And one that is slowing down goes beep, beep. So thinking about what that looks like, visualizing the um, heart monitor visual that we would be uh, hooked up if we're at the hospital and we would see that then you know what a sound wave looks like um because a sound wave we don't normally see them right but they're there and if our sound waves if our sound wave frequency is peaceful and um soothing then that would be a slower lower vibration which isn't necessarily a negative thing you want to go into a, a, a soothing peaceful state when you're going to sleep and so you want that lower frequency when you're going to sleep you want to dim the lights um, too much light will keep you awake um, too much sound will keep you awake and for some people they like a little white noise or gray noise or pink noise and if you don't know what that is you can google youtube videos about that um, but basically we want to drop down into delta and slow things down when we're going to sleep that's not necessarily bad to be at that low vibrational frequency if it's for the purpose of calming down so you can go to sleep and likewise being at a high vibration is great if you're busy and you need to be able to multitask and focus um, it can be good to be on a high frequency however um saying low vibration or high vibration literally what people mean by that generally speaking is they're talking about positive and negative and that's not really an accurate depiction of the sound waves and the vibration because you can be very high vibration and very anxious and your energy can be spiking and uh you know that's not necessarily a good thing right it can be too much it can be and if you're not taking the time to slow down and rest and you're just going 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 yeah that's not the kind of high vibration that you want to call in right that's um probably going to be counterproductive so when we're thinking about spiritual warfare and we're thinking about our words and we're thinking about 
what we project into the atmosphere around us, into our environment, into the universe with our words, then it is very important to remember that let's say somebody is peaceful and they're just relaxing and they're meditating. If someone walks into the room and they're really loud and it can seem very obnoxious to the person who's trying to rest and it's not in resonance then. So there's some value in reading the room before you speak and, and realizing the atmosphere of the location that you're in and and adjusting to that atmosphere wherever you are. So for spiritual warfare, what we want to think about is not allowing the frequency of the outside, i.e. things like cars honking, um, stressful situations, aggressive speech, not allowing that to penetrate. And then in order to do that, we have to create an energetic shield. And for those of you who have noticed, I have a blue finger. It's because I did some dip dyeing today and there was a hole in my glove. So I have the one Kalima blue finger. So, <laughs> and, uh, and I have my uh, fabulous, it's like five coats of paint to get it to show up like this, but this is the fabulous Easter egg colors. And if you want to read my mug, there's a little message there for you as well. So today I am drinking my coffee. It's cold outside, so I gotta drink my coffee rather quickly so that it doesn't um, get too cold. And that is a frequency. The cold air, the time of year, the, the cycle that the moon is in is all a frequency. So for example, if I want to rest and recover, let's say because it's my moon cycle and I want to relax and take, take it really easy, then I'm not going to want to be really high vibration. I'm not going to be wanting to do a whole lot of busy body work. And so being in low vibration in that case is not necessarily a bad thing because it's for the purpose of rest. But if I want to be high vibration, meaning elevated, you can still be in an elevated spiritual state and be at a lower frequency and just kind of slowly, deliberately thinking about things, which is not bad. That's generally what we want when we're meditating. We want a, a lower, calmer, more peaceful vibration. So what does this have to do with spiritual warfare? Well, when we're aware that something is not in vibration, let's say somebody in our field, in our, in our presence is projecting because they're angry or they're irritated and they don't, they don't know how to guard from letting that affect other people. Then when we speak, our words have energy. So when we speak, it's very important that we consider what we're saying and how it's gonna affect others. So just like if somebody's getting ready to go to sleep and the person walks in the room and they're really loud and it seems obnoxious, that's not, um, that's not conducive to producing the kind of environment that people are comfortable in. Also, the person that's resting, right, that wants to have um, peace can set up some boundaries with words to say this is what I need from you right now and so instead of it becoming you made me angry and I yell back at you because I'm angry because you woke me up and you upset me and then we keep we're both on that high spiky angry vibration now because it's um it's like I caught the virus right now I'm angry too and then we keep that cycle going in order to stop that we have to set up boundaries before it even gets there so having boundaries could be things like closing the door it could be things like turning off um, the music it could be just going and being silent by yourself it could also be um, when we're in public and we don't have the ability to do those things. We can't close the door. We can't be alone. We kind of just have to get through the day because maybe we're at work. Then that's where putting on a protective shield, 
so somebody let's say we're in conversation with someone they're really angry their energy is spiked they're projecting it outwards we realize that it's starting to affect us to block that energy the best way to do it isn't to visualize all of these like shields and blocks between you and the other person but to start before you even leave the house setting those up so full body armor protects the head there's the helmet of salvation that protects the head um the breastplate of righteousness protects the heart and the internal organs um the belt of truth holds all of it together and the the original context of the writers of this verse in the christian scriptures in ephesians talk about the belt of truth holding it all together but they don't necessarily explain what that looks like for modern people reading this text because at that time it was probably understood that this is like what people wear and it was more like a robe not pants and a shirt and a belt that goes through belt loops but more like a robe so the belt actually literally held everything together because without that it would just be like this drapey robe right and if there's a gust of wind you can imagine how that might not work out so well so the belt of truth holds it all together and then um the feet shorn with the gospel of peace which is the gospel of peace is essentially really simple it's repent and you can be saved repent and salvation is available to you now what is repentance repentance is when you turn from the thing that isn't working and you start doing something new it's not just saying you're sorry mm, that's great but it's not everything that's not what repentance is repentance means to turn from what's not working in other words let's say Let's say you know that something that you're doing isn't working, that it's hurting you and it's hurting others. Repentance isn't to apologize and keep doing that thing. It's to, it's to really take a look at it and say, I know I can't do this anymore, and then start m turning completely in a different direction and going a different way where that activity, um, thought or, or behavior, that action, you're not continuing to do it. How many people have been in a relationship with someone who says, I'm sorry, and then does it again? You're not likely to really believe or trust that person because when they say they're going to do something, they don't follow through. So when we talk about the full body armor of God, it's not just a physical thing. It's a spiritual and energetic thing. And it's not done in your own power it's done in the power of the almighty spirit of all creation so then you're essentially filling yourself with the light of that spirit and putting on armor to keep the light in to protect your light and that's very important because if you just put on a shield but inside, you're still struggling, you have all of these negative emotions, you're not cleansed on the inside. What good is that shield really doing? It's going to be easily penetrated because inside, you haven't done the cleansing work. So it's very important to cleanse your energy before you start moving into protection. And so that is really, really important. Moving forward to understand that that's that's foundational, right? If I go outside and I'm not wearing a coat, I'm gonna get cold. I mean, today I didn't need much, just a little hoodie, I'm good. But if it were really, really cold and I was gonna be outside for a long time, this probably wouldn't cut it, right? Um, but the reason this is enough is because right now I have heating packs on, so I'm getting heat from another source. Likewise, if I am working on shielding and protecting my energy, if inside I have the light from an internal source in my soul, then I have another source that other people can't necessarily see, but I'm getting that warmth, I'm getting that heat, I'm getting what I need from another source, and that source is within me. Therefore, I don't need as much outer protection outer layers outer wear 
because I have an internal source. So I hope that made sense for you and um, that you stay tuned in because I will be sharing more in the coming days. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And remember to smile on the inside so that your smile just comes out on the outside without you even trying.